apology. Tonight, I am very hungry. Okay. The second stick translates back into English. Please eat. Fantastic. How good is that? Let's see if this works back to front. So, tonight, I am very hungry. Divorced tonight. Divorced tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is rubbish. <laughs> He's quite a sweet fellow, really. I think I'll call him Bob. Moments later, Bob is dismembered by the staff of Narita san's restaurant and readied for the deep fryer. I know it's different on there, though, isn't it? It's none of those, but the numbers are different. So the colours will mean something. I think the orange things are hot, or are they? Television shows are often accused of exaggerating the truth in the name of entertainment. This machine genuinely took us six full minutes to work out. Yes, there you go, right. Even after that, I've only unlocked door number one. No? So just to summarize, I went to a very complicated machine to buy some noodles when I could have just asked a man, but I got a ticket from the machine, which I then had to give to the man, and he tore it in half immediately and sent me over to the noodle bar, where I offered the ticket to the lady, but she didn't want it. But three minutes later, it turned out I had hit the jackpot after all. Wow, look at that. And now everything is okay because I have a bowl of noodles. Mmm. <laughs> a near miss. I like to think that the problem is that I'm much taller than the average player, not that I'm a bit fat. Oh, I got one! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that bit. Well, if we were certain other unmentionable TV programmes, we would fake that and just find an octopus and put it in the pot and then pretend, hey, look at the octopus we've got, but we can't really do that, can we? Because that's not true. No. Uh, so what do we do? Well... I've heard that some people have actually managed to catch an octopus this morning, so we might be able to buy an octopus or borrow an octopus from somebody else. You know, as long as we can get to the restaurant and do the, here's how you prepare an octopus. Yeah. If somebody here's caught one, we could, do, we could just revert to the 1970s and say, here's one we caught earlier. And here's one we caught earlier. Now, you join me at a slightly awkward moment because after our very enlightening walk in the mountains, I thought Master Hoshino said, would you like to join me in the bar? It was the bath. More specifically, an onsen, which is a specific type of bath. The definition, in fact, has been protected under Japanese law since 1948. To qualify as an onsen, it must be the product of volcanic activity. It must be geothermally heated to at least 25 degrees. I'm delighted to say this is rather more than that. Uh, and it must contain traces of 18 minerals. Um, if you were wondering, and to save you starting a rather tedious thread on Twitter, yes, we are completely naked. And the reason I have the small towel on my head is not because I'm celebrating the British seaside holiday of the 1950s. It's because this little scrap is what I use to hide my vile body, as Evelyn War would have put it when I climb out. The cameras will be cut by then, not because I'm embarrassed, for your sake. 
Today, though, I'm going to take six hours by train to go to Tokyo because I'm going on something called the Shikishima train. And it is the most luxurious train in the world. This is because it's very old. <laughs> Mending motorcycles. <laughs> I have a 360 Bentley. And a super cub. Super cub? Yes. Very old one. <laughs> I decided to wrap this up before they started asking me if I was going anywhere nice this year. All right. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to have to blue steel myself for what was next. Hair was just the start. Against unanimous public opinion, apparently, I need a new wardrobe. I'm already wishing I hadn't come. This is quite a cool piece of clothing. Um, I feel that I defile it. I like this. Do we agree that this hoodie's good? This is a 300-year-old katana, if anybody has anything fatuous to say. I suspect not. James is looking fabulous today in this 30-piece cast-iron spring ensemble from ancient Minamisoma. Perfect for fancy work meetings and massacres. I'm not supposed to eat it. No. What am I supposed to do with it? There's another media who want to film this food for this lunch. They can't eat. Somebody else wants to film my lunch? Yes. Why don't they get their own bloody lunch? <laughs> Tickets are 8,000. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not supposed to eat it. You're not supposed to eat it. You are supposed to allow other people. Okay, so you have to stand up and we have to let other media to come in and film. But anyway, it's the best compliment you can pay a chef to think, mm, that's nice, and start eating it. Yeah, yeah. All right! Oh! <laughs> now, because of complex international music licensing laws, we're only allowed to show you the very briefest clip from this next song. Is that a problem that I can't fix? Because I can do it in the mix. And if a man gives you trouble, then you get it on the trouble, and you don't let it trouble your brain. And away goes trouble down the drain. Trust me, that was enough. Yes. And today we have this uh, penis festival. Mm. This apparently is the annual Kanamara Matsuri, the festival of the steel phallus, a religious fertility celebration where people will come from miles around to look upon all this and say, oh cock. In England, you don't have penis festivals? Not as far as I'm aware. Well, welcome to the land of the rising penis. Unfortunately, being the tallest here, all the weight of the float is focused on my shoulder. Come on, James, you can do it. Too tall. Yeah. I'm dying. But you're a British samurai. You're strong. How's your leg? It's not my leg, it's my face. I'm running out of energy. Yes. Oh! Oh! I'm 6,000 miles from home. I'm in pain. I'm carrying a giant penis and I've no idea what Asa means. Asa! Now, a lot of people watching this might find all of this distasteful, but in the end, it's only a penis. Statistically, everybody's got half of one. Which penis is your favourite, James? Mine. It's an ear cleaner. But if I clean your ears, the video inside of your ears is displayed on your iPhone. Isn't that fantastic? No. What do you think this is? I don't know. I have no idea what that is. 
It's a dish cleaner. What? There you go. What is the point of that, really? But you're not going to buy this. No, I'm not. The review of the day's footage seems to go down well. Ah, here's something we need to address, Yujiro. Uh, toilet. The Japanese kazi. This is oshiri. This very helpful uh, little graphic means ass wash. Yes, ass, yes. And yes. some of them play a tune as well, don't they? Yes. So that if you do a big fart, you're not embarrassed. Is that right? Yeah, so yeah, In yeah. England, people just sing Roll Out the Barrel or something to cover up the noise. The, the latest uh, models have this automatic self-washing, um, what do you say, uh, program. It cleans itself, Ooh, the latest model, ah, latest right, model. Okay. But well, that's why this is expensive. One, absolutely. Yeah. But if um, you can adjust how strong y you want the water to, you know, clean your ass or your, yes, yes. Uh, or your bidets, yes, your, yes. your sensitive crutch. Yes. Okay. So you can even wash your face with this, you know. You can, I mean, theoretically. When you press the hip, the, the water comes out. You can. You can, theoretically. But you, you don't have to. But we think it's a mountain. It's not. It's merely a manifestation of what this country means. And we're trying to get... We will never do it, but we may get close. We can aim for it. And aiming for it is a cleansing and soul-satisfying experience, except in my case. There was still a bus in the back of the shop, though. No, but I don't care if there's a bus in the back of the shop. Buses are part of life. That's what we're fighting against. I put it to you this way, if we turn this round the other way and I was painting a picture of the bus going past, would you say, oh, well, that's all right, but there's a big mountain in the back of shop? Well, put it this way, we're creating our own work while you are creating your own work at the same time. Yes, but this is art, that's photography, no disrespect, but that's a record of what's happening. This is an interpretation of what is being felt in our hearts and what it all means. Yes, but to me, this film doesn't mean a big Chinese bus. It's you communing with nature and trying to decipher the mysteries of Japan. Yeah, but art would have no meaning if it didn't exist in the real world. If the world was only full of art, it would merely be the world. That's the world, the bus. This is art. It can only exist next to it. Yes, but in which case, why not just paint a picture of a bus? I'm having an artistic tantrum. <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> You can take a photograph of the bus. It's a, it's a manufactured <laughs> artifact. It's an elaborate photocopy of an original. That's what mass-produced items are. Should we go to lunch? Yeah, ramen. <laughs> Nickname, Jim. No, I've done that wrong. You've written your name wrong. Oh, no, I've written yeah. Bim. I uh, got it. Oh, no, I'm... No, take me back to where I was first. <laughs> there you are. I'm Bim. And so it begins, Bim and Robohon's excellent adventure. The latter with his wealth of GPS-activated local knowledge, the former with his inability to spell his own name. Bim, guess what? What? Kyoto protects traditional crafts and making things is popular here. Wow. Yes, it is. Well, it's not a not really amazing fact I've had a watch since I was three, you idiot. And they're off! Our man 390 is in second place already, where he started. And there they go! Our man's has taken the lead, he's moved into first place. It does look a little bit like the traffic in Tokyo, a line of K-cars, not going terribly quickly. And our man is still in the lead. Anything could happen, but I bet it doesn't. I spoke too soon. In a dramatic turn of events, our man slips back to seventh place after doing a full 180 degree spin. That's a lie, he's still in the lead. 
As is the case with most motor racing events, bugger all happens. I like rules and so on, I'm surprised this is allowed. I mean, it shouldn't be allowed on all sorts of levels. It's two-stroke, it's dirty, it's actually a child's toy. It's not really road legal and it's silly. It's good, isn't it? Konnichiwa, domo arigato, sumimasen. Right idea. What? Traveling is kind of getting me excited. Is it? I think one of the other tourists dropped him on his head. <laughs> I can see people thinking, why's that grown man got a plastic doll? <laughs> Yes. But it was fun, wasn't it? How about you, Bim? <laughs> Tell me how was it? <laughs> Japanese audience. Everything from chin strokey New Yorker satire to absolute bottom of the barrel Christmas cracker jokes. Guess which he's picked? And the ones you've chosen are? Yes. The first one, the, 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 uh, my boss. My boss told me to have a good day, so I went home. Well, I think it's funny. OK, well, if you think it's funny, that's what no. matters, because then we'll see if it works yes, in Japanese. I hope so, yes. And the second one? The other day, my wife asked me to pass her lipstick, but I accidentally passed her a glue stick. She still isn't talking to me. Is it funny in Japanese? Well, uh, 80%, 80%. 80%, OK. 80%. Speechless. Ladies and gentlemen! Oh no, there it is. Osaka, Mira, Kombawa! Yujiro, Tima, Yoshiko, and Jimas! Yeah, first British joke! Yeah! Okay? Aruhi, Joshi, Ga, Kaisha, Dima, Shita. Have a great day! Yoi, Chinchio! Watashi, Wa, Sono, Mama,そうきに会社を後にしました。これつまんないね。要はあの会社早退したってことだよね。じゃ、二つ目。ある日曜日、妻が僕にこう言いました。ねえ、あなた。リップスティック取ってちょうだい。お。間違えてグルースティック、ノ
That one looks just like Dan, the sound recorder. I am Dan. Ooh. Oh. What do you think this place is? I think it's a school. Yeah? That looks, that's sort of school stuff, isn't it? The last remaining children left the village in 2012, but the school is far from empty. Well, there's a whole class in here. Oh my gosh. That's really terrifying. The vases here take years of know-how to create. Mine took me less than 30 minutes. Amateurs. If you were to put this in your shop, glazed and fired, how much would it sell for? <laughs> After that reaction, we cut this scene short. So we went off to film some more walking shots, this time including a critical door shut. OK, that? that was good. I think actually we should have vibrant vegetables. What yes. do you think? So we're on the machine over there, we've got to look for a man going through a plate glass window, a Venetian blind, Eleanor Jay, a funny man chatting up a female robot and a pile of park benches. Well, there it is. Look, there's the plate glass window, the robot woman and the pile of benches, and it's the right price, and it says vegetable, so I reckon that's it. However, I was prepared to put up with a lot to work on the assembly line. The only problem was we were told that filming me working on the assembly line was completely out of the question. So we filmed something else instead. This exercise routine is common in many Japanese factories. Feels quite nice, actually. Awkward moment. Luckily, our tough Aussie cameraman was used to filming in difficult terrain without ever complaining. Uh, I'm getting really rather wet. I'm getting really very wet. Very wet. OK, I'm getting really wet. <laughs> and then we encountered Japan's Olympic synchronised rowing team. I'll just get away from this bloke going backwards. Don't worry, there isn't going to be a crash. Wow, we are very close to the waterfall. OK. I'm going back and starting again. Just a little bit. Waterfall up and by, coming up. Here we come. Whoa. Whoa. Despite the whole scene descending into an aquatic game of dodgems, I was determined to manoeuvre myself into a position to deliver my peaceful and learned monologue. That's boating skills, that is. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I can do it, I can do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm ready. This is Mama Taro. He's a local folk hero. According to legend, an old lady. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> He's no. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mama Taro. He's a local folk hero. And let me see if I can remember the story correctly. There was an old woman who was out by the river and she saw a big peach floating past. So she picked it up and took it home. And when she cut it in half, she found this small boy inside. And the small boy went off and he made friends with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant and a pigeon and then somehow, with their help, defeated all the ogres who were threatening the city. And why is his penis open to one side? <laughs> <laughs>